There's a better way to make solid metal parts from 3D prints. If you can do Lost PLA, you can do this, and as a bonus, it requires no additional work. In fact, it's a little more forgiving. And as a double bonus, if you insist on continuing to do Lost PLA casting, uh, there are a few tips scattered throughout this video that you can use to help you with that too. And no, this isn't going to require tons of expensive equipment. Now keep in mind, this isn't the ideal way to do it. I'm gonna work up to that in the future. In fact, I'm going to, on purpose, do it the quick and dirty way so you can see how this works under noob conditions. The ideal way, in my opinion, requires a resin printer, special burnout resin, uh, special flasks, special investment plaster, which is cured under, under a vacuum chamber, then burned out in a special burnout oven that you can control everything really finely, and then another special oven to very, very carefully melt the metal, and then you pour it into the special flask in a vacuum-like casting setup, and, and I don't have most of that. So what I'm gonna use, I'm, I have an FDM printer, I have the foundry furnace that you would need to melt the metal anyway, and stuff you can find at a hardware store, and that's it. So, step one, the print. Uh, this is not lost PLA casting, as, as I said. In fact, there's no PLA here at all. This is a PVB filament called polycast, and I think it's the ideal way to do this because it's designed to burn out very cleanly and leave no ash behind. Crud left behind in the mold can completely ruin a casting outright, and in fact, it's totally, totally wrecked some lost PLA casting that I've done years ago. And I don't really think any of them, even the good ones, turned out all that great. Even people who like do lost casting all the time complain that there's this this like ash and junk is still left behind even after some really hot really intense like ceramic shell burnout you know this stuff won't do that I'll show you proof later the second reason this stuff is the best is it prints beautifully here's the thing like you get a new filament right you run it through the battery of tests to find the flaws you make some adjustments and uh, run a couple of tests again and eventually you got like the settings dialed in and your new filament prints like perfectly right well not with this. I didn't do any of that. This is a PVB filament. It's not PLA. It's a completely different kind of plastic. And I didn't do any setup at all. I didn't even click the little checkbox to say PVB. I just let it print my basic, like, generic PLA setting. And it came out perfect. It printed better than most PLAs. Probably because there's, like, no junk thrown in there, no filler, no colors and stuff. So none of that got in the way of the printing. The only slight issue I had was on the Triceratops skull. It's a file that comes with like Prusa printers. It comes just on the chip when you buy the printer. Uh, that had a little tiny bit of stringing between the horns. And again, keep in mind, I've made no adjustments at all for this completely different kind of plastic. It just worked out of the box. There are other burnout filaments that you can get like machinable wax, and I've heard really good things from like other friends I have who, who do metal casting, uh, but I bet they're not just gonna plug in and print perfectly with your PLA settings. I told you this was no extra work, right? In fact, I've had zero failures, not one failed print. And I printed a bunch of stuff, more than you've seen in this video. The third reason, if you're not lazy like me, is you can smooth the prints with isopropyl alcohol, kind of like uh, ABS, you can smooth it with acetone. This is a, a different kind of alcohol, rubbing alcohol works just fine. I didn't do that because I wanted to see like the 3D print, print layer lines. I wanted to see if that resolution came through in the print. Also, also, I'm kind of lazy and I didn't feel like doing that. Uh, prepare for some sticker shock though, uh, but, but beware, I brought math. This print, in my favorite standard uh, atomic filament PLA, I like their PLA, uh, cost me, uh, let's see, it uses 82 cents worth of plastic. Uh, in polycast, if I cast it in this stuff, it's, it's $1.93 worth of filament. It's a buck more. One dollar. Uh, for a better chance at not having a ruined casting, therefore wasting all the plaster and the fuel, and my time and frustration, a buck, one dollar. That's not bad, I'll pay an extra buck. So because PVB can be smoothed with isopropyl alcohol, it can also be glued with it. Like how I glued this sprue on this Mandalorian helmet. I just kind of brushed it on both surfaces, just jammed it together and uh, held it there for a while and it worked. Also, hot glue works, like on the Triceratops skull. Also, a little tip, you can use straightened out pieces of filament as vents. Because you want, you want the metal to go in, but you also need the air to like get out, and you need venting for that. And yes, I used a hot glue stick for the sprue on the Triceratops skull, and I stuck it on with hot glue. Whatever works, right? So next up, you mold it like any other lost PLA cast. The print goes in plaster. Uh, now, I didn't use proper investment plaster. There is proper plaster for this. I didn't do that. I used straight up hardware store plaster of Paris with no additives. Here's a tip. So when you mix this plaster stuff up, you can get like air bubbles in there. 
I didn't want to break out the vacuum chamber. So use a vacuum chamber to like make the bubbles expand and you bubble it out. So what I did, I took like some plaster on a brush and I brushed the surface of the prints. This can give you some better surface texture I've heard. Let it dry out, that, that small coat dry out, then submerge it in plaster. Cuts down on the air bubbles. No, uh, no vibration table needed, no, no vacuum chamber. Here's another tip. People use like tin cans for this, like soup cans. Well, what if you need a different size soup can than the ones you got? You gonna go buy more soup? Dump the soup down the drain? That's a waste of food. What if you don't like soup? Well, go to the hardware store again, go to the duct work, and, and look for round ducts. Here's one. This is a four inch vent. This, this one happens to be an elbow. You can like turn it to get different shapes. You can get straight ones too. You can cut them to different sizes. Make sure to get the steel ones. This one's four inch diameter. You can also get like three inch diameter, five inch diameter. They make a bunch of diameters, okay? And then you can get like, these are like caps, right? And you can, and now it looks like a soup can, only it's a lot bigger and you can make whatever, whatever size you want. Uh, then use to, to seal up all the gaps, especially on these elbows, because these are like all gaps and the plaster can leak. But you know, around here, especially the cap, use aluminum foil tape. This is much better than duct tape. It costs the same. It's a little more annoying to use, but it's much better for duct work than duct tape. They should rename it. Now this is important. Don't use aluminum for this. I see a lot of people using like scrap aluminum. Throw, the, throw that crap out. Well, don't throw it out, keep it. There's a better, easier metal for this, and it is Zamic. It's, it's a zinc alloy. There's a good chance too that at least one of you melted some Zamic thinking it was aluminum at one point. So here's the deal. Zamic melts at a lower temperature than aluminum. It's easier to melt. It's more flowy, more liquid, like more like watery. So it flows into details better. It's stronger than aluminum. It's also heavier. So if you need a doorstop or like to throw it at someone, this is better than aluminum. If you want to buy this stuff, I'll put links like somewhere below uh, where you can probably find some of this. Uh, but oh yeah, it's also cheaper than aluminum by a lot and much, much cheaper than pewter, which is another common like casting alloy. Now these, now these zinc alloys are numbered. You know, ZA and then a number. This one's number 12. There's like three, five, seven. They're all probably fine. You know, Zamic, the zinc alloys all over the place, like faucets, drawer, metal drawer pulls, anything like chrome and shiny. If you got a metal, like shiny metal towel rack in your bathroom, that's probably Zamic. Just, just rip that right off the wall. You can use that. Uh, if your wife like yells at you, just tell her I told you it was okay. You'll be fine. Pro tip, next time you go buy like a, like a couch or something, Make sure to, to lay down on it, test, make sure you can fall asleep on that. Make sure it's like comfortable, just in case you'll end up sleeping on it during times like this. Hmm? So the burnout process is just like any other lost PLA. I'm using my foundry furnace for this. I threw it in there, got it to like a dull red, held it there for like an hour, hour and a half or so. That seemed to work just fine. Now I actually do have a nice electric controllable oven that I could use for burnout. And I, I fixed it recently in video, but what I didn't show you is two days later, I was trying to improve it and I broke it in a different way. So, whoops. Uh, if you use like ceramic shell, that's another thing, not plaster, they dip in like a special ceramic. The ceramic firing process will completely burn this stuff out. So just doing that, you'll be, you'll be ready to go. So when it's been in there for a while, a couple hours, pull it out of there while it's still hot. I tried to get like a shot down the hole of like the Mandalorian helmet one, cause that has like a clear shot into the casting. It's really hard to get a picture down a, down a hole and get the light down there at the same time. So I, I tried. There's no ash in there, right? It's pretty cool. That's why this filament is good for this. Anyways, now that the mold's sitting there, immediately start melting the Zamic. Like throw the crucible in there with some of these, some of these ingots. All of these zinc alloys melt at a much colder temperature than aluminum. That means you can get these zinc alloys melted uh, much more quickly than you can aluminum. And as your, as your mold is cooling down, you can get away with it cooling down a little bit more because the temperatures are lower here. This helps if you say only have one oven for doing both of these tasks. So if you burn it out properly, the metal will, will flow right in there, no drama, just like this Mandalorian helmet, out of focus and everything. If you don't burn it out enough, you know, the way I've ruined a bunch of other castings in the past, it'll look like this. Lots of smoke as everything burns out as the metal rushes in. This is the Triceratops skull. I'll show you the aftermath in a minute. Now, wait for the metal to solidify. With Zamic or other zinc alloys, this takes a while because it's a lower temperature, but the plaster is pretty hot and it insulates pretty well. So just give it a little extra time. Then once it's solidified, throw in the bucket of water, get, you know, dig out the plasters, just like the other method. Anyways, here's the coolest part. I'm gonna do a big YouTuber no-no right now. Generally, you wanna clean up the casting or your project off screen or in like a montage where you can't really see it up close and then show you the close-up. 
I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you the raw castings right out of the plaster. I literally used like my pocket knife to dig the plaster out poorly. And then like some pliers like break off some flashing and the vents and stuff. And that's it. Take a look. This is the raw casting, the raw casting of the Triceratops skull. The, the one that did not burn out properly. Look at, look at how shiny it is. Look at the detail. It still looks good. All, all like the thin, the really thin spots are filled all the way. Thank you, Zamic Alloy. We even got print lines showing up. They're the easiest to see where like the printed part printed an overhang, it printed like this. Under here is overhanging, it's supported overhanging, but overhang still like they don't, they don't, they don't print quite as clean. And look at the detail around that. The Mando helmet, uh, aside from some flashing, looks pretty good. I mean, this was, honestly, this is, this was a very simple, this was a very simple pattern. I don't know why I even cast it because there's hardly any detail. It's just a smooth, shiny helmet. It does look pretty good though. I mean, these side things on the side of his head, those are neat details and this little vent thing in the back. I don't know, it's going back in the melt pile anyway. When I tried to cast like that lost PLA Jon Snow and I didn't burn it out enough, his face looked like he tried to make out with a wood chipper. And I didn't burn this out with this filament and this metal. It, it came out fine. Uh, so there you go. Try polycast filament and Zamic 12 metal. Even if you do everything else exactly the same as Lost PLA, I bet you'll have better results and fewer failures. So stay tuned in the future where I uh, show you the much better way of doing this after I buy and build some more equipment. And if you want to know more about like this magic, fancy, extremely common metal, uh, click, click the video that's wherever. And I will see you next week.